What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? Don't ever wait for your doctor to order blood tests. With Private MD Labs, you can get your blood test prescription online in under one minute and go directly to over 4,000 lab locations in the United States. They offer every blood test imaginable at affordable prices with highly accurate results from tried and true state-of-the-art blood testing diagnostics. In fact, I've been using Private MD Labs for more than a decade. Their blood tests are much more in-depth and accurate than any at-home pinprick or worthless saliva test. Skip the intrusive doctor questions and get the exact tests that I recommend. Be proactive and get your panels today. Go to privatemdlabs.com forward slash JC to take 15% off your order. Send you guys love and light. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell and this is the Jay Campbell podcast and I'm very excited today be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio with an amazing brother. And that would be former Green Beret, Travis Wilson. Travis, how are you, brother? I'm good. I'm good. I'm excellent. It's It's awesome to to have you here with me here today. Um, This is going to be an amazing show. So you guys, Travis is actually also the owner of Alpha Elite Performance, uh, which is an amazing supplement company. Uh, He reached out to me or I reached out to him or I think we actually we got introduced by a mutual friend. Mm-hmm. And this has been a podcast long time coming and it's a perfect time. And by the way, today is Thursday, October 14th for a time stamp. The Jay Campbell podcast has a big queue right now, but the world is an interesting place right now, Travis, is it not? <laughs> oh, it's uh, it's scary. It's interesting. It's entertaining. It's hilarious. Uh, I mean, yeah. How many adjectives do you want me to? Yeah. It, well, you know what? It's 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 where you want it to be, right? Like from an energy standpoint, like, you know, you always, all of us get what you put out, right? Like I always say the universe is a mirror and what you're putting out is what's coming back to you. So yes, these are very strange and interesting times. Uh, even, you know, you as a person who served this great country, and as I've said to you already, thank you for your service. I'm truly appreciative and privileged to have you here and for the things you've done for us. But It's crazy to see like, you know, the once proud United States military, you know, get to where it's at now with the debacle that's happened, you know, overseas in Afghanistan recently. And just, you know, with the current quote unquote commander in chief. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's not the military that you served in, obviously. So I, you know, I think, I think the first point that we want to talk about here today, which, you know, you're nobody, nobody better to speak about it than you is what is going on right now? in the U S military from a standpoint, you know, that you can look at now as a retired, you know, ex special forces guy. You know, I, I'll tell you that. I mean, I can't honestly answer that because I'm, I'm not in, but you know, I do have a lot of contacts and uh, some of my peers who are now senior leaders uh, in the military within special forces that I, I still talk to. Um, you know, I'll, I'll tell you that they're pretty disheartened. They're pretty upset. They're scared. Some of them are at 19, 18, 19 years and uh, ready to retire at 20, but are, you know, considering leaving, you know, are considering just exiting the military because they're being forced to do things that, uh, you know, only a, a dictatorship would would do. Now, granted, you do when you join the military, you lose, um, you know, a lot of your freedoms that civilians have because you are serving in the military and you have to listen to the commander in chief, but uh, you only take orders from, you know, that are lawful orders and things that aren't going to get people hurt or killed. Um, So you can understand, you know, why some of these guys want to leave uh, because there's some things that are happening that do get people killed or I'm trying so hard right now to, to just take my brain so far away from that. I'm happy to be retired. I did my 21 years. Um, You know, I served in, in 10 special forces group, my whole special forces career, absolutely loved it and didn't experience the, the, the crap that's going on right now. Uh, and, and I feel bad for, for those that are, uh, 
you know, my heart hurts for those guys uh, that have to go through this crap. I don't, I don't know how to. Don't have enough time. <laughs> Bro, bro. By the way, you have amazing luscious locks, man. Are you using our fan <laughs> grow in your hair? What? You know, I normally wear a hat. I, uh, I think this is in defiance of having such a short haircut uh, my whole military career. Um, That's but awesome. It's still kind of thinning. It's, it's weird. It's uh, as you get older. Well, I'm 46. I'm gonna send you Oxano, dude. You're not. Your hair won't thin anymore. But you know what? It's awesome that you said that. Uh, let me, let me just pose a question for you. And you know, you don't have to answer it, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. Sure. Is this potentially an attack from external forces, but internalized in that they are attempting to weaken the armed forces? Oh, man, there's absolutely no question about it that, I mean, liber liberals and Democrats, it doesn't matter which liberal or Democrat president was in office. They always weaken our military. Always. Uh, the military is, is not of it's not at the forefront of their ideas and where they want to take the nation. Um, we're there to protect. Uh, essentially, I think when the Democrats and any honestly, actually, with any president, we're there to protect their interests and right. the interests of this nation. And a lot of the interests of this nation make those politicians extremely rich. Um, so, I kind of feel like, uh, yeah, that the, you know, this administration definitely is weakening this military. Um, it's weakening America as a whole. Right. I mean, this this the Afghanistan debacle was such an embarrassment. I never ever experienced anything like that. Right. Um, America turned around with the tail between the legs and, and got the hell out of there. Um, you know, this Lieutenant Colonel, uh, Marine Lieutenant Colonel, who just recently, I think today, pled guilty um, to exactly what he, he did and said, and, and he had every right to, and I'm glad that he did. Uh, it's going to take more men like that to stand up. That guy's up. a hero. He's a hero. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it's going to take, uh, you know, men like him to stand up to uh, to, to this administration and this oligarchy that that, that – you know, is destroying our armed forces in America. And, and we I mean, are now weaker in the eyes of our enemies. Absolutely. They're laughing at us. Uh, I mean, we laugh at them. La yesterday, North Korea, you know, posted a video of their dudes breaking bricks with their heads and shit like right. that. That was, that was dumb. But you know they're doing that because, well, one, they're just idiots. And two, they're laughing at us. You know, Right. They're looking at America as the once proud fallen I mean, I'll, I'll take it a step further and then we'll talk about you and your stuff and where we're going in the world. But like, I think this is an invasion. I think that this is literally a, you know, a Sun Tzu art of war, you know, a silent invasion by the Chinese. I mean, we know you and I both know that they own the current president and his son. Yeah. I mean, that is obvious. I mean, anybody who doesn't know that at this point is completely head in the sand. Get out. We're on watch it. the Jay Campbell podcast. Unsubscribe from my channel. Yeah. Right. Like if you do not know that, then you're retarded. So I would say that this is actually a covert operation of the Chinese to weaken the United States, not just militarily, but economically. I mean, I have friends and I'm sure we're going to get into this because you're in the, you know, e-com world now um, who were paying twenty one hundred dollars for a shipping container from China oh, in yeah. February, who are now paying somewhere between twenty five and thirty thousand dollars per container so 900 percent markup me, bro you're gonna tell me in 10 months or nine months yeah the cost of shipping containers went up thirty thousand percent yeah right. i mean how I mean, is that even possible other than it's a war this is yeah. actually what they're doing to destroy the usa yeah no i agree with you i and i and i i know that to be fact uh, it was three thousand bucks for a shipping container for plastic tubs for our products uh, and now that's gone up to like 24,000 or something like that. Insane, dude. Um, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. And those costs have been pushed down to us and we're trying damn hard not to push, push them off to the consumer. Um, we haven't yet, but we'll see what happens this summer. Um, but yeah, it is, it is a war. <clears throat> and you know, with the amount of money that, uh, what 40% of the money that America has printed happened in 2020 alone, 40% of the money that was printed happened in 2020 alone. We're going to print seven trillion more dollars, uh, and I just read this article. But we're going to print seven trillion more dollars this year for, and then we're going to pass this, you know, whatever two million or two trillion, three and a half trillion, whatever bullshit, you know, make back better America thing that Joe Biden wants to do. But that money is going to go back to China. We're going to borrow from China to buy Chinese solar made wind right. panels and wind turbines, uh, you know, all this garbage that uh, is only going to make the Chinese richer 
and then those politicians a lot richer because they're going to invest in it and insider trading that they're allowed to do that we're not. Hey guys, what's going on? If you're looking to level up your life from a mind, body, and spiritual perspective, join the fully optimized health private membership group today. There is no better place online to discuss hormones, peptides, fitness, fat loss, supplements, and even raising your consciousness with an elite tribe of men and women. You also get to speak to me directly every single week in the Ask Me Anything. Join today. Go to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up, and I'll see you and talk to you soon. Well, I mean, it, I mean, bro, it, it, Travis. It, it, Control it, it, the middleman. I mean, look, look, man, what you just said brings up a bigger question because wh at what point does the United States economy, which is the global economy, let's just be honest, it's a yeah. circle now, sure. collapse? It's on its way, but I don't know. You just can't keep printing money. I mean, communist countries and socialist countries, you know, just kept look at Venezuela. They just kept printing and printing and printing and printing. And are, look at bro, are we headed to be Venezuela? Is the USA headed to Venezuela? No, because I think that the Second Amendment and people like me aren't going to allow that to happen. I'll die for this country. You know, if it gets so me to heaven or hell. Bro. Yeah, if it gets me to heaven or hell, I don't care. I will die I, for this country. Oh, you're going to heaven. But, 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 but <laughs> dude, I'll, I'll tell you this right now. Like, I, I say this on all my podcasts. I mean, I'm, I never served. I have tons of relatives that have. And obviously, I'm a huge loyalist to the military. But it, it's, it's interesting because you're right. I mean, this is a, a giant Ponzi scheme. The banks are in on it. The sovereign nations are in on it. You know, you've got now with crypto and blockchain, you know, in addition to fiat, it's like this giant effect of like, what in the hell is going on and how does this keep going? And obviously, you know, you and I being e-com guys, and we are going to get to your story in a second. It's like, how much longer can people continue to buy our shit, bro? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's uh, I, I, I get frustrated daily um, about it all from our government and what they're doing to our military, to e-com, uh, to the consumer stuff, it's its killing me. So, uh, you know, I just had a, a large order today from a supplement store. And the amount of time that it takes me to get my products made now um, is insane, twice bro. as long, three times as long because of the supply shipping issues. And, uh, and it sucks to be able to say, well, I can't sell you that much right now because I still have the online part of this. I don't like to be out of products. <laughs> um, it's a good problem to have, but people don't understand. They want this no, stuff they now and to be able to tell them, like, I'm sorry, we're a month out from getting this product. It just drives me up the wall. And this gray hair wasn't here yesterday. But, uh, I mean, <laughs> Bro, you and I have very similar stories. We'll get to that in a second. Okay. But yeah. before I skip over your amazing military career, can you give us a couple highlights? Like, what do you remember? Like, yeah. what are you so fond and proud of like that? you know, while you served the 21 years that you did that you're just like, I mean, I know there's certain things as a special forces guy, you can't talk about, but like, what are some highlights? You know, I, I'm actually going to go all the way back to my childhood. My father was air force pararescue, nice. uh, which is special operations for the air force. Um, but he served in Vietnam and he, he had the utmost, res utmost respect for green berets that he uh, aided and, and, and helped save you know on some missions and stuff but so as a child he used to sing uh stanzas parts of the ballad of the green berets by barry sadler that's um, awesome you yeah if you never heard that song you got to listen to it um and so I, I wouldn't say that i was groomed but i just you know i was like what's a green beret and i knew at an early age my dad told me these stories about these guys so uh went to college military academy dropped out i absolutely hated the, being told what to do <laughs> uh, and uh you're an entrepreneur <laughs> yeah, right. And so I actually I had to join the military after that. So I uh, became an airborne medic uh, in the regular army, airborne infantry, um, but knew that that wasn't for me. I had to be told what to do. I wanted to go to the big boy, land of the big boy rules and all that. So I became a Green Beret, went to selection in nice. 99. Um, so some things that I remember, um, selection, uh, Sergeant First Class Bitterman. Uh, I haven't met him or seen him since selection, but he was a man that um, kind of just set my path forward with, with a, he came up to me, I was leading the stick, uh, on team week. I was in front of everybody. I wasn't allowed to turn back and see who, who wasn't being able to keep up. Cause at this time, at the end of team week, you're smoked, you're done. You've just emaciated. Uh, and I'm looking at the sand that I'm walking on in, in Camp McCall, North Carolina, just dying, sweating. And he just leans over to my ear and he said, 500 meters. Now, this is a man, mind you, that, you know, is able to do pull-ups with one arm, mean as shit. It's in his name, Charles Bitterman. 
at, or starting first class Bitterman. And uh, he just leans into my ear and I didn't expect it. And he said, 500 meters. That's it. 500 meters. And that 500 meters ended. We got to stop, take a break, eat real quick. Um, shut your eyes if you want, drink some water and get ready to do the next uh, it, team week uh, event because you do two a day for a week and uh, and you get smoked. Um, but that I, I never forgot that that 500 meters I just kind of used um, for the rest of my career in that awesome. I just have 500 meters. That's it. That's not very far. And uh, you, you, it might be a little hard, but whatever, you're going to make that 500 meters and you're going to go into the next 500 meters and so on. So I used, I used what he told me, what he said to my ear quietly because he didn't want everybody else to hear. And, uh, and it pushed me. And so I use that now to push myself. Um, you know, then I got to group and, and deployed, went to war quite a bit, uh, went to Africa. Um, you know, another moment that I remember was my buddy, um, Jake Anderson was shot in the chest on a raid into a house, just took one straight to the chest right above his plate. And uh, we had some some Iraqis with us that we were training up, you know, to fight against the bad guys in their own country. Well, they drug Jake out. And nobody, none of us really saw it. But I heard, you know, the call for Jake and he wasn't answering. I just happened to be on the outside of this house right now and saw him laying there. And I ran over there and I used to be a medic. But when I became a Green Beret, I became uh, an 18 Echo, which is a communication specialist. Radios, apparently that's the job they gave me because they said I was super smart. And I would say lie. But uh I ended up treating Jake, kept my EMT license current and all that stuff. and ended up treating Jake and, and he lived and he's here today. Awesome. Died a couple of times, I guess, when he was in a lot air base uh, hospital, but uh, he's here now. Uh, and that was something that, you know, I, I remember, obviously, um, but there was you know a lot of combat shooting, um, IEDs, things like that. Uh, and then another one, you know, was uh, something that almost ended my career that had nothing to do with combat, but in preparation for another deployment, I had a, um, I was a military free fall guy. I was on a, a free fall team, specialty team, uh, halo team. And, uh, and we were in Eloy, Arizona practicing for an upcoming deployment, hoping that we get this combat jump mission. And I was coming in on final shoot opened. Everything was great. It was a night jump. Uh, I was talking to the boys with our push to talk system. And then all of a sudden I heard a little ruffling in my shoot. And the right side of my canopy collapsed and I just spun wow. down to the ground, probably, you know, a couple palm trees high, you know, Damn. Um, but had enough lift in my chute that it didn't kill me, but broke my back. And I had 13 oh. surgeries, uh, you know, since then um, to repair, fix uh, the damage and stuff that it did to my body. I've had a couple spent spent a little time at the brain treatment center in San Diego, um, got real involved in the stem cell treatments actually was a CEO of a stem cell nonprofit that, uh, I left, um, and, you know, just trying to do everything that I can to, to keep my body from falling apart. Cause it's held together with metal. And was, that, was that the uh, tape and balsa wood, right? Is that, is that the end? Was that the end of your career when you, no, it? actually, uh, it, it should have been. And so I thought that, so that kind of leads us into where I'm at now is that I, I was like, man, I'm going to get kicked out. I just had disc replacement in my back and into reconstruction. And, um, uh, but, but I healed up enough that I actually went back to jumping out of planes, but only on um, permissive TDY type, uh, jumping. Maniac. Well, I mean, you know, adrenaline is the most like it, it's, I love it. So, uh, I love you, bro. We don't it's know almost other, better than sex, but are. not quite. <laughs> uh, but now there was a job that opened up uh, an agency type handshake position um, within group that uh, I, I tried out for and made and kind of got into the nerd intel side of, of the house. But at that time when I got hurt, I started Caliber Nutrition, which was a supplement store selling other people's products. Um, and then, you know, that wasn't good enough and I wanted to have my own product line. So um, turned Caliber Nutrition to a small uh, supplement store and, and personal training studio. Then I built a bigger gym in Colorado Springs called, uh, what is it, Fit365, and uh, sold those and started Alpha Elite Performance. And here I am, and I'm just taking everything that I learned while I was in the military as a Green Beret, uh, you know, and, and just applying that to uh, life and business, which um, I will say is a lot harder than being a Green Beret. <laughs> I mean, I, I tell people every day, and, I, and I'm not like you again, not military, but very interesting background, uh, professional athlete, you know, played college basketball, um, got into uh, marketing and advertising and, you know, was in that quote unquote corporate space, rose all the way up to 
you know, executive VP type guy and then, you know, got let go at 40, you know, over salary because I was making too much money. And, you know, you look at things from a standpoint of like, wow, you know, you make all this money as a, you know, corporate wage slave when you could just do it all yourself. Right. So here sure. I am now, fast forward 10 years. I've been in the entrepreneur space for 10 years. I've been in real estate, you know, I've built a couple of companies, you know, now influencer, you know, affiliate marketer. And now like you, I have a Sierra custom, which is now two years old. It'll be actually officially will be two years old in November. And it's incredible. I tell people this every day. There is nothing harder than running a fucking online e-commerce store. Is there, <laughs> I mean, it's bro, it's a 24, seven, 365 gig, right? Yeah. Yeah, it absolutely is. It is. It's annoying. <laughs> it's, it's annoying that it is like that, but it's also fun and rewarding. It is so, rewarding, especially in it's this industry. Rewarding. But there's yeah. no there's no downtime, right? Like you can get into the best position ever where you're flush with cash, you're flush with inventory, your system is good, your marketing is good, and then literally you get the call and you're like, your your website's down. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are I've had that happen a, a, a few times. Yeah, <laughs> or fighting this social media you know war with ever changing algorithms and. Right. things like that and yeah, facebook and yeah dude it's nuts i mean as i told you you know i was two calls this morning you know one with a seo guy and then you know a, a visionary marketer guy and you know it's like you know they tell you like uh, you know you think you're in a good spot and then yeah. you know you, they, they tell you like no you're an idiot and here's why you know so it, it's true dude like social media technology it's the be all it's like the bane of our existence right like yeah. when when you use it properly it's great but it can just become so overwhelming and like, you know, so intrusive in your life, especially as an e-com guy, because you have so many people, as you know, messaging you on the daily with a new widget. Yeah. Hey, you know, you should think about doing this, right. Versus this. I mean, like, you know, talk about that, like as an e-com guy, you know, like how, how, how hard is it to say no sometimes? Man, I hate the word no, but you know, it's, I say it a lot, actually. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm kind of at, at the point where I'm at in this business. I'm one. I don't have the capital to take some of these risks. You know, right. Um, right. I used. I've never taken out a loan. I've just used my deployment money that I saved up, built a business, That's and amazing, used that dude. money. Um, but I'm, I'm at the point now where I'm going to have to to take out a loan. Well, we've uh, taken out three loans this year. I mean, they're all yeah. small, like, you know, one for 50,000, another for, uh, with a bank. Uh, uh, well, actually, Shopify Capital. It's all through Shopify. 75 right, yeah. grand. You know, we pay it back right away. But I mean, yeah, dude, I mean, unless you have somebody who's paying you, but to get to a certain number, I mean, you know what I mean? By just like loaning you money privately to get to a certain yeah. number in e-com, it's almost impossible without taking out a loan. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And then we're learning that. And, um, you know, this isn't anything that's made us multimillionaires or anything like that, but it's fun. We live comfortably. I'm able to enjoy, you know, disability and my military retirement that that helps. A lot of these guys who start these e-commerce businesses don't have that luxury right. um, and that to fall back on. Um, and my wife still does a little um, transaction coordination for a real estate company uh, nice. because she's really she's good at that and knocks it out real fast. So why not just, you know, keep doing that? Uh but in saying that, you know, we're at the point now that to compete against um, like the first forms and, and companies like that, who I absolutely admire and respect. Uh, Sal Fursell is a really good buddy of mine. He's the CEO over there at First Form. Um, you know, he just he's 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 it's he's competition, but he's not competition because they, right. they those guys are killing it. But he's the kind of guy He's like, hey, man, just keep moving forward. I can't wait for you to make your first million dollars. And and uh, and I love that about him. Um, and that's, you know, that's what, that's our goal. And if it, if it, you know, as long as we're living comfortably and providing a good product, uh, to our customers, which we are, I, re I refuse to sell crap. Well, we, we sell some stuff I don't take. I don't believe in, you know, fat burners and cause there's no such thing as a fat burner unless you're, you know, we can get into that, but come on, bro. It's, it's a thermogenic. Well, no, we could talk about all of that. We can talk about all of that stuff. But yeah. yeah I mean, okay. So let's do, let's talk. Cause you're a guy to talk about it. So I, I'm a guy who, you know, it's made my bones in the internet space as a quote unquote, you know, health optimization influencer, right? Like I've written yeah. all these books, you know, people, you know, know me from the books. I mean, as you know, at one time, like people are, you know, cause you're around my age, I'm 50. What are you like? 46? How old are you? Yep, 46. Yeah. Yep. So we're about the same age. We came, we're Gen Xers, right? We came out yep. of the same world. We, we came from a world where we actually had to fucking research, bro. We, you know, we <laughs> right. couldn't say, Hey Google, what's the answer? Yeah. Yeah. Remember when your teacher said you're, you're never going to have a calculator in your pocket. 
You know, now I've got a calculator in my pocket every day. Well, it's nuts, right? But but yeah. the truth is, the truth is, is that the supplement industry, by and large, is a bunch of whores, right? Like they lie, cheat, oh my God. and steal. The stuff that's in products is absurd. And I'm glad that you said what you said. So you opened a can of worms for me because like I know yeah. I can talk to you about this. But I was in the supplement space twice in my life. And now I'm obviously with my own company. Uh, I was partnered with other people previously, but dude, I couldn't do it. I, I mean it from a, from an actual, you know, integrity, moral soul standpoint, I could not do it because I saw what was going into the products that even we formulated where, as you know, one batch you get from your manufacturer is like crystal pure, tests out at 99 per nine cent. Yeah. And then you go about your business and you keep paying them. And then every month they inch you up or charge you more. And then you're like, well, wait a minute. They're not providing the, you know, CPC quality control analysis like they did in the beginning. Like, how do I even know they're selling me the right stuff? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's always a concern. And I, I like to be a, I think my makers are, are tired of talking to me because I'm always digging into them and telling them that I'm going with informed sport or informed choice so that, that you know, my stuff will be regularly tested uh, so right. that athletes can take it as well. Right. Um, that just takes a lot of capital up front, which, you know, we're trying to figure out. Um, but yeah, we, uh, and back to the fabric thing, there's, I call it a weight loss aid and uh, got rid of some of the ingredients that I wanted my products, especially our weight loss aid to be compliant more. Not that it wasn't compliant, but I don't want to sell somebody some false positive, false hope bullshit that, you know, they're going to sweat their ass off and think that oh, I'm losing all this weight. There's also an education into how a weight loss aid works, you know, with caloric deficit, working out, drinking water. It'll help speed it up a little bit with the thermogenesis sure. and things. Right. Um, and that's what we try to educate these folks on. And uh, and over time, it's long, it's sustained weight loss as opposed to that rapid stuff that immediately comes back, um, you know, that you see a lot uh, when these IFBB pros and, and when they go on those crash diets and a week later, you know, they balloon back up and you're like, how the hell did that happen? Fatty <laughs> Jesus. But <laughs> don't even get me going, bro. Like I, 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 I could tell that you are extremely educated in the space and you and I could have like a whole separate podcast on just like how big of a joke it is. And like the quote unquote coaching fitness industry of like teaching people like about fat burners and, you know, lowering the carbs and, you know, starving yourself and then you know having thyroid yeah. collapse and you know ballooning up and all that stuff because you see it all the time i mean i still have yeah. people that will email me you know that'll be like this is my coach's recommendation and i'm like if i even got into that rabbit hole to respond to this person it would be like so bad for their coach that i'm like you know delete i i, I don't right. want to get involved in it because as you know like it, the space the fitness you know personal training coaching whatever you want to call it now the space is so full of bullshit that like you, you really, you know, you, you got to let people sort it out for themselves. Right. Yeah. I mean, like you can't get involved. If somebody wants to pay yeah. you, that's a whole different story. Right. <clears throat> if they're just emailing you and they're like, Hey bro, can you like look at my coach's diet recommendation? You know, I'm competing in physique or, you know, muscle, whatever the new one, the middle group is, yeah. or, you know, and I look at it, I mean, I do read it and I'm like, I'm not responding to it because there's, what can you do? I mean, all you're going to end up doing is getting that coach fired or into an argument with his coach. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Or he's going to, yeah, no, I hear you, but it's, it's a, but it still is an entertaining industry. You know, we have, uh, you know, other products that i absolutely love and I loved helping formulate those. And well, let's talk about your products. All right. Let's, let's, let's definitely talk about your products. Cause I mean, obviously I, I wouldn't have brought you on the show if I didn't believe in your products. I mean, I, you know, when I started looking at what you're doing, I was like, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. Again, there's so many scam artists. Yeah. You know, in the supplement industry. I mean, I mean, bro, you already know the whole term biohacking, you know, it's full of people who are essentially internet marketers. They're right. not people like you and me who are actually living the life and walking the walk and talking the talk. You know, they're literally scam artists who just happen to be good internet marketers who are trying to sell people, you know, a bunch of, like I always say, dude, I say this to people all the time. I say most supplements are lint and chalk ground up into a capsule and then sold at a markup with amazing labeling. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, formulation, you know, you know, the stuff, the, the buzzwords on the outside of the mm -hmm. label. I mean, it's unbelievable, dude. Yeah. 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 I know. And a lot of the, you know, it's kind of one of the reasons why I kind of got in this industry is that I saw a lot of bathtub steroids, you know, um, you know, the, the war fighter, 
wants to be big, strong, fast, furious, and, and bust through doors with their head and, and then blast and kill people in the face. I, and and it, it enraged me that these dudes were making this crap and sticking it in their ass. Uh, you know, essentially, they're just, you know, slowly killing themselves. Absolutely. Um, so I was like, well, why not just take, you know, deer antler velvet, um, Chinese herbal medicine. Some people believe in it. Some people don't. Mixed it with a little bit of creatine, a little bit of green tea extract, and gave Boom. it to my buddies. And uh, and actually had it formulated with a buddy of mine in Colorado Springs. And they liked it. They really did. Um, I, so that's one that it's called MPERC, Muscle Performance Endurance Recovery Complex, is what we, uh, we sell. We started with that one. Um, and it sells really well. We, and we stack it with our testosterone booster, which really, uh, you know, I don't know. Some people love testosterone boosters. Some people, you know, shit all over them. Uh, I like ours, uh, you know, it, it, it just kind of, it's got deaspartic acid, all that good stuff that would go into a test booster. Um, and you're not going to become He-Man off of it. Right. Uh, you know, I become an IFBB body builder, but you know, it, it works and it, and it helps in the gym, uh, for, you know, some strength gains and things like that. Uh, ours also helps with libido, which, you know, people absolutely love. Um, so it, uh, it helps your body increase its own testosterone naturally. Sure. Um, sure before people have to go into TRT, stuff like that. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? If you're looking to use peptides, make sure you go to my number one source, Limitless Life Nootropics. For healing with BPC-157 and TB-500 or fat loss with Ipamorelin, CGC-1295 and AOD-9604 to immunity with TA-1, thymus and alpha-1, Limitless has a huge selection. Go to LimitlessLifeNootropics.com and use my code J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I send you guys tremendous love and light. Well, uh, I, I mean, look, I'm glad you said that because, you know, as a guy who, you know, has written an entire chapter on testosterone boosting supplements, you know, the reality is, is that everybody should do everything in their possible, in, in their possible way to naturally enhance Sure. You know, what is what has been given to them by God, by God. Right. I mean, obviously, we're in, a, in, a, in an environment now where most people are being decimated, you know, from the food, the air, the water, the shit, the, the, the you know, the BPA, the phylates, obviously yeah. the endocrine disrupting chemicals. They're everywhere. But I mean, I have always been even since the beginning, like, look, naturally optimized. It yeah. just becomes very tough today to not do that. But, you know, until you've exhausted all the options, including, you know, something like your supplement, you know, you should never even consider doing testosterone optimization therapy. I mean, obviously I'm a big proponent when it, when it becomes that place and yeah, need yeah. that, right. But you should, yeah. you should always, you know, like I said, like exhaust every option from a natural standpoint before you walk that path. And sure. It just, it's, it, you know, it's just becoming harder and harder now today with the environment as shitty as it is. I mean, a study came out this morning, a person sent it to me about testosterone levels. They now know this is from like the American Neurologic Association. It's from 2020 study. It says that now the average man is walking around in the streets and this is in North America with the testosterone levels of a 85 year old person from 1975. <laughs> yeah. It's literally yeah. insane how big of an epidemic it is as far as, you know, suboptimal hormones. And it's not just for men, as you know, it's for women too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. My wife's combating that right now. She's 36 years old and, uh, and she's got low T and, and for a woman. And um, so she's using the, the gel or the, uh, yeah, it's like a, a wipe on gel type thing. And that's nice. the first step and, and to see where yep. that takes her. Um, there's, and some other things that, you know, were depleted, but like zinc and, and magnesium, things like sure. that in her body, but we got those back up. Um, but in our, on our website, if you go to our blog area, you'll see an article written by Chuck Bailey, another good, uh, uh, a veteran, awesome dude out of Boston. Um, he wrote this article on low testosterone in special operations. And there's a huge problem with low testosterone within special operations. Um, and they've noticed this after years of combat and, and these guys just running and gunning for so long. And, you know, well, why, are they retiring with low testosterone when this wasn't a problem um, before the wars kicked off, you know? Uh, and it's pretty interesting. Um, so I, you know, I, I highly recommend reading that article, um, but there's so many other articles written by the VA and people who are trying to figure out what the hell the problem is with low testosterone within special operations guys. 
Um, I was one of those guys uh, when I retired and uh, just always tired and, you know, had to make it. Uh, are you looking for the article? <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just oh. going through your website just so people can All right see on. it. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it is a problem. And uh, but like you said, it's, it, you know, exhaust all the, the measures naturally to increase testosterone before you get into testosterone replacement therapy, um, which is amazing for people. Um, when they do start it and how they feel and you know now they're doing things that they didn't think that they could do anymore right but, uh you know especially having sex which everybody that's what everybody wants to know is like when can i have sex like an 18 year old again well i don't know necessarily know that you will at 18. <laughs> yeah no exactly it's more of a dopamine thing <laughs> right Tra 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 travis like right now like with where your business is like you know where where do you ultimately seeing it like are you somebody that wants to get it to a place where you can then sell it um you know to somebody or are you a long are you kind of a long road guy like where you want to own this you know and do you know your you know you know golden age so to speak uh you know i i'm a long road guy i i don't want to build this up and sell it i want to turn this into you know, the first form for, for the military, you know what I mean? Um, I love our veterans and I want to provide them products, um, you know, that, that work. Um, so we're still in our infant stages, so to speak, this sure. is a, you know, third, fourth year. Right. Um, there's a lot of things that we haven't done that we could do. Um, but right now I have such a small team and we're doing small things, but they're big in nature. If, if that makes sense. Yeah, of um, course. So, but it's a lot of fun. We give, you know, 10% back to the green beret foundation, uh, you know, every quarter and, uh, we, you know, which I'm also a part of, I'm a, uh, the lead ambassador for the green Beret foundation. So awesome, uh, I'm honored to, to be able to give back to those guys. Um, but in saying that I want this to be in the long haul, I, you know, I pray quite often about being able to provide for veterans coming out of the military. And that's where I would love for this business to be is large enough that I can start hiring veterans, whether it be truck drivers or, you know, somebody working in the shop, uh, to, marketing I, I just want a team of veterans um for some reason they, they you know these people have such a hard time transitioning from the military to civilian life and want this company to be uh, known for being veteran owned veteran friendly veteran employees and uh, and just have that environment that uh, we absolutely loved as vets as active duty guys and just carrying that over in, into this company uh, because i can tell you that if, if a company had nothing but veterans um it, that company would absolutely prosper because you give a suggestion to somebody and they turn that into their own mission and they'll accomplish that. Uh, Bro, we have five employees and two are vets. Nice. Good, good. That's <laughs> so, great though. That's don't think that I don't know that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, I, I mean, mean they like, show up. Oh, I mean, they're mission guys. I mean, yeah. all people that were successful in the military, you know, and one of them is, you know, X, X special forces too. Nice. Um, you know, are mission driven as you know. Yeah. Right. And you give them a task and it's like, not only are they going to dominate in that task, but they're going to come up with like 25 other angles yeah. around that, you know, how to make that task more efficient in the construct of your company. So yeah, dude, I mean, I, I I'm, I'm with you, man. I mean, I, I highly always tell people like, if you're looking, you know, whenever I mentor or whatever, I'm in groups of people who are looking to hire, I always say first thing, like look for ex United States military people, because yeah. as long as, you know, they're able bodied, like they're going to work harder and I'll think, you know, most people, and let's, you know, be honest, you know, cut to the, cut through the bullshit. I mean, the younger people of today, bro, or again, as you and I know, like they've been, they've cut their teeth with this shit. Yeah. So they don't really have the work ethic and they also don't. And again, I'm not attacking young people. I know that every individual is unique and different, but like, if you've grown up with this, bro, and you've never had to learn critical thinking skills, or as I call it, yeah. discernment with CER capitalized. It's a lot different than somebody who, you know, was in the military and had to improvise and had to learn and is again, is mission yeah. and purpose driven, you know? So I always like tell people like that's first step, like, you know, find somebody who's fresh out of the military because they are living for the most part, usually a purpose driven life. Yeah. I would, I'm, I'm really curious. So to see what, you know, not my generation, the guys that are retiring now uh, and and maybe the last generation, but the, the generation that's joining the military right now, uh, I'll call them out and, and I'll talk shit about them all I want because I, all I see now is not a military that I saw when I joined. Listen. I see fat, 
Pussies. out of shape. I mean, the, the uniform. Well, they don't just, even have one pull up as a requirement. Right. Yeah. No, I, I just helped a buddy who was in the Navy. Uh, he went to Navy SEAL, um, the Buds course, got hurt. Anyway, anyway, get out, got out of the Navy and said, hey, help me get an 18 X-ray contract. That's essentially coming off the streets as a special forces guy. He got accepted. He goes to basic training. And I'm thinking, OK, I won't hear from this guy for eight weeks, whatever. He calls or texts a week later and says, hey, man, I'm in having a good time. And I'm like, how in the hell are you texting me? He's like, oh, we're allowed to have our phones at basic training. They're literally like they're allowed to have their phones. You're like, yeah. What? And I shit my pants. I was like, are you, where? you go to basic training to have that civilian lifestyle taken out of you. It's insane. You know? dude. It's gone. And, bro. But this military now is it's coddling. It, 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 it allows these guys to eat what they want. There's right. no nutritional value in anything that they get at no. the chow hall. They, they say that there is, but there's not because, you know, no. I gave up on the chow hall years ago. Right. And these kids are fat, lazy, out of shape. And you cannot, I don't care if you support me or not. I'm, I'm being honest. And you can walk around the military and see totally this. Totally true, bro. Go on any military installation and it's sad. Um, and, and, and it's hard to kick these people out of the military now. It used to be like, hey, here's your counseling statement. You have... Uh, this many months to get in shape and take a PT test and pass. Well, then they come up with some other excuse. Well, I hurt my ankle, so I can't take that PT test. So then they get it. It's just extended and extended and extended. Uh, and then you used to be able to get kicked out of the military for just appearance. The command can kick you out for the appearance of a soldier. Uh, you know, and, and the tape test that they use to, to, to determine if a guy is out of shape or fat or not is just garbage. They tape your neck and your waist and, you know, Kills me. Kills me. I've seen bodybuilders that they say is fat. You got to lose weight because of this tape test that they do. But right. Um, so I, anyway, and saying all that, I want to be able to help these guys in, in not just not with supplements. If they come to me and say, Travis, look, I'm in the military and I'm fat. What can I do? I will help them without the supplements first because sure. it can be done without supplements. Right. Supplements help, though. Uh and, and that's what needs to happen. And I don't understand that the, the, the government, the military spent so much money on personal trainers, um, building gyms, uh, but yet they keep getting fatter. Well, yeah. I do know why, because now they're adding, you know, the Taco Bells and the Burger it's Kings and, yeah, and all these. Food, bro. Yeah. Food. Yeah. Panda Express and and all that crap. And like, hey, go eat it. And then they get off work and they don't do PT and they go sit in their rooms or whatever, eating and playing the, the Xbox and all that crap. Um, you know, it's just sad. It's it Bro, used the to be that people don't even know how to eat. I mean, you saw that oh, last yeah. year, or actually, it was the beginning of this year when there was that massive cold wave that swept through Texas. Yeah, and all those millennials and Zoomers—that's what their generation below many millennials are—they couldn't eat for three. They starved yeah. for three days because they couldn't order takeout from Grubhub. They yeah. have no food in their fucking apartments or houses. Right? That's that's so. Hey, if somebody's <laughs> listening. There's a job for you. Start a business teaching millennials how to cook, do laundry. <laughs> You know, just it, the bare necessities of the electricity. Go turn the electricity off and, and see what they can do, dude. I mean, how could you not have tuna or beans yeah. and rice and a fucking you know uh, what yeah, do you yeah. call it? one of those like you know lighters underneath the cans? I forget what they're called yeah, right now. You're right, dude. I mean, they literally are completely functionalist without technology. Yeah, absolutely, and it's sad. So when 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 all when when this world goes to hell in a handbasket. You know, only the the strongest will survive, and and it's totally true. It, yeah. might, it might be a right around the corner. Travis Wilson, you are amazing, man. Uh, if people <laughs> want to reach out to you, and obviously, I mean, you know, they want to buy the products, AlphaLeadPerformance.com. But you know, social media. I mean, what's the best way they can get a hold of you? Uh, AlphaLeadPerformance.com is our website, and if uh, if you're listening to this, use code Elite fifteen. That'll save you fifteen percent on individual products, and then. Our stacks are already discounted 5%, so that'll be a total of 20%. Awesome. Uh, but if you have any questions, anything like that, just alphaeliteperformance at gmail.com. Um, you know, just hit us up, and uh, I'll answer, or I've got a few other people that uh, work with us that will answer. Uh, but usually it's me because I like to take a personal invested interest in into the people that uh, have those types of questions. I want them to be answered according to my beliefs and, and where I want Alpha Elite Performance, uh, how I want my company to answer back. So. Um, yeah, it, it, you know, just hit us up uh, anytime. So, Travis, I appreciate your candor, brother, man. I really do appreciate you yeah, coming my... on the Jay Campbell podcast. So, for all of you guys that have watched this amazing podcast, support Travis. Go to alphaeliteperformance.com, buy those products, get that 15% off coupon or 20% off with the stacks. And remember, 
raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys very soon.